God is saying, then comes great tribulation. Great. Great tribulation don't start till the 13th chapter of the book of Revelation. Tribulation starts in the 6th chapter of the book of Revelation. But now, don't get ahead of me, and don't, I mean, I don't want you to. I know you're smarter than I am, but, but let's don't get ahead of God. All right? But he says here, so when Christ returns, will he find faith on this earth? What do you think? Now, I'm, I'm, yes, he will. He will. He will find faith on this earth. Yes, he will. This is often asked, and the question is definitely, you can write that down and put it in your Bible. Yes, you will. Christ will. God will find faithfulness on this earth after great tribulation has come. The Jews and the Orthodox Jews and the Great tribulation and all of the 144,000 that God has sealed, there is going to be great, great faith. And the thing about it is this, faith will be preserved in his faithful ones. And it says here, and we're going to get to that, and I don't want to get ahead of myself. But in 1 Corinthians, that 13th chapter, and it plainly states there, that though we speak with tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding blast and a tinkling cymbal. All right? Love is what binds people together. I believe we've got greater love in Mount Carmel Church than any place I've ever been. I believe it's here, and I believe it's rich, and I believe it's meaningful, and I believe people, yeah, I believe it's genuine. I don't believe it's a put on show. And down in verse number 13, he said, now look what he said. Now Paul wrote this and God put his pen of love on this paper. And he said, now abideth. Now, now means now. And God said, now abideth faith. And then look what he said. Hope, charity, these three. Just same as God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, either way. He said, these three, but the greatest of these is love. All right, but it takes all three of them to manufacture love. Faith. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. You don't have the Word of God and the power of God and the charity of God and the hope of God and the faith of God and all the love of God through all of these other things that are books that call themselves the Bible. You can't get salvation out of a turnip. You get salvation out of the preached Word of God. People say, well, now, I got saved at a singing. If you got saved at a singing, it was the Holy Spirit of God that drove you to that altar. It was the Word of God somewhere in that song service that brought you to an altar. And if you really got saved, and that was on a Friday night or a Saturday night, Sunday morning, you're going to be in church somewhere. Now, can I throw the grease? I'm going to throw the fat in the fire. There's a fellow come through here last fall, last summer, sometime last year. James, in your neck of the woods. And I'm not putting no man down, and I'm not lifting no man up. He put a tent meeting and had a tent meeting right here in our community, didn't he, James Williams? All right, he got on the radio program and he's telling about all these people that got saved, Miss Donna. They're getting saved coming out of the woodwork over out chicken houses and out of the hollers and 
down the ridge and everywhere. People was coming down the sawdust trail and they was getting saved. You heard about it on the radio on Sunday morning coming to church. Where they at? They're not at Zion Hill. Brother Tim didn't get any of them. And I'm not making fun. God forbid. Mount Carmel didn't get a one of them. Brother Frank Cooper down here at Proper, uh, Proper Grove, he didn't get none of them. How do you know? I've been doing some checking. If you get saved, you're going to love the church. The brother up here, as far as I know, at uh, Walnut Grove, he didn't get any of them. Brother Brian up at Goshen didn't get any of them. Well, who, where did they go to church? If they got saved and he had about uh, 40 or 50 saved, where did they go? Did God rapture them and leave us? Are we so far away from salvation that God said, hey, they got saved and I'm going to leave that rotten crowd in Reagan Falls? I mean, I'm not being making fun. I'm just asking a question. Where do all these people go that get saved in all these tent meetings that these your fly-by-night evangelists come by and want their pockets lined with your all's money. God said, bring in Malachi 310, bring your tithes and offerings into the storehouse of God. Not into the tent, but in the storehouse of God. He said, bring them, don't send them. Mike Durham, bless God, I got a holy grunt out of you. Brother, I'll tell you right now, God don't want you mailing it to Mount Carmel. God wants you bringing it. What is Christ trying to tell them right here in this, in uh, Matthew 24? He said, there's coming a great tribulation. It's not going to be tribulation. It's going to be a horrible, horrifying, terrible, terrible time. When you see your children and your children's children and your wife and your daughter and your brothers and your sisters dying, going to hell without God and you're screaming, but it's going to be too late. He said, you didn't tell them I was here when I was alive. What are you going to do when I'm gone? All right. A child walks by faith. And a child, when they walk by faith, great men of Israel, turn to uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 11 just a minute. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hurry through this. I'm going to hurry through it. I promise you. Chapter 11, verse number 1. <clears throat> now faith is the substance of things hoped for. I want you to mark this in your Bible. For faith is the substance of things hoped for. Something you're hoping you're going to get. The evidence of things not seen. Donna's hoping she's going to get a 40 pound diamond. <laughs> but the evidence is things not seen. She's going to get a box of Cracker Jacks. Amen. Okay. I think she's already got the Jack in the Box. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Yeah, hey, Lordy. Well, the cat's out now. All right. It says right here, look. By faith, Abel offered. 
Verse 4, a more offered unto God. Did you catch that? A more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Cain offered a sacrifice to God, but it was not what God said, give me. God required a blood sacrifice, and Cain knew it, and Abel knew it. And Cain got mad. Ain't that just like a Baptist? It is. They get mad, buddy, I'll kill you. I'll shoot your dog because you killed my cat. Boy, I'll shoot you. I'll get even with you just sure as I'm living. You wait. I'll start something on you. I'll get you back somehow or another. You know what Cain done? He just shot Abel. He had 122 bullet left in a pumpkin patch, and he went and got it and shot him. Amen, brother. He shot him. That's how he split a church and start trouble. You know how he got that uh, one bullet in the pumpkin patch? It's right there. It's that little old tongue. That tongue will do more damage in a church than any bullet you can find in a pumpkin patch. He was just slinging seed for seed. One time you destroy a person's testimony and you start trouble and you start trouble and start trouble, it'll snowball and snowball. And after a while, you'll bust that church wide open. And the thing about this, faith cometh. What about Enoch? And you go on down, what about Noah? You go on down, what about Abraham? You go on down, what about all of these others? In faith, they died looking toward the cross. By faith they lived and trusted in God. They were looking toward the cross. And here, like a child, he walks by faith. And after a while, he'll get up and he'll, he'll get them little old legs underneath of him and brother, him or her, and they're going to walk. And they're going to step out there and they're going to get to going. The great men of Israel, they walk by faith. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. In First John, in, uh, uh, chap in John chapter 5 and verse number uh, 4, chapter 5 and verse number 4, listen to what the word of God says. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. The less said, the best said. Remember, it's one time you've said something, you can never take it back. Ma'am, I'm sorry. Sir, I'm sorry. Boy, I wished I'd never said that. I could cuss you out. I can say ugly things to you. But every time you see me, you're going to think about what. Crystal, ain't you going to think about? I got two crystals in here tonight. That and then this. One. But if I said something ugly to crystal number two, right here, every time you see me, you'd think about what I, ugly thing I said to you, wouldn't you? She can't forget it. Only way she can forget it is for her to get Alzheimer's or either die. But when God saved you, He not only forgave me and you for everything, but God put it in a sea of forgetfulness. See, God forgets all of those old bad things and puts them in the sea of forgetfulness, but you don't have that privilege of doing that. And that is what God is trying to get the three churches, uh, uh, the seven churches that we looked at in the three chapters that we are raptured out of. We're heading into chapter four in the book of Revelations. You're leaving all of that mess behind. Ain't you glad, amen? God is rapturing you out of all of that mess. Thank God that'll all be gone. Whew. Amen, Sister Crystal. Amen. It's gone. All our trouble's going to be gone. Not only that, he said now, for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. We cannot imagine 
what God has got for us when God says, come up hither. Whoo, glory. I mean, brother, when I leave the ground, I'm heaven bound, brother, and I'm going downtown heaven. Brother, think about it. I mean, heaven is, uh, I mean, it's so real, you can't even, we can't understand it. And that's what God is trying to get. He's trying to prep these boys in Matthew 24. All right? Not only to endure because of their faith, but they endure because of the hope. Now, I don't hope I'm saved. I know I'm saved. This hope is eternal hope or eternal salvation. And hope is the anchor of our soul. Christian hope is anchored in Christ. We're saved in that eternal hope. And that thing about Christ is our hope and he's able to keep us saved. And we're able to know that because in, in, here in Matthew 24, he say, told his disciples when he got them up there. And he got them all up there and he said now, he said, for many shall come, in verse number five, many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Okay, now listen, we've got North Korea, South Korea, we've got China, we've got the, si the Siberian uh, uh, just above Russia, we've got Russia over here, we've got all of these here, we've got Guam, we've got all these here. Now I've been trying to uh, picture all of these places. Now they're coming in and now they're getting a configuration. But now all of the 10 confederated nations of the European common market, they are seated. And that, that talks about, no, I, ain't gonna, I ain't gonna let the cat out by get. But anyway, when we get in there, those 10 horns, those 10 kings, when we get over there in the book of Daniel, when we get in there and you begin to see all of that, in the book of Daniel, that when they rise up, we're going out of here. And all they have to do, all they got to do, folks, is take their place in our economic power. And we're so close to them taking that power reign. They've been seated there. See, there's Poland, Turkey, Czechoslovakia. There, there is all of those nations Sir, we did not have all of them nations that were completely in unison. And Sammy, you know that when we were over at Pine Fork. They did not have, they had, I believe there's eight of them. But now they've got 10 seated. Actually, they've got 12. See, Gomer is Germany. Look at that. G O M. E R and it was S. Reagan went in there. When Reagan went in, and I don't care if you're a, a Democrat, Republican, or a dog catcher, don't make a bit of difference to me. The book says Gomer's. But for an S on it means more than one. It was an East and a West Germany. The wall come down under Reagan's reign. Now there's no East West. There is one Germany. There's one Gomer. So Germany don't have to seek two at the, at the European common market when we had 11. When Gomer was, the wall was tore down between East and West Germany, you take one from 11 and how many does that leave? Come on. That leaves 10, don't it? And they're all seated. But one rose up and sat with the United Nations 
but they have pulled out. And that was Turkey, but Turkey has come back and took their seat and their reign again with the European common market. So now that you have a full body in the European table, but their Trump has got them so confused they don't know if they're washing or hanging down. All right? And me either. But think that, and that ain't hard to do. Amen, Jennifer? I figure she'd stick both hands up in the air and shout. <laughs> All right? But we endure for the hope. All right? Last thing tonight, and I'm done. All right? So we're, going, we're going out of here because we endure because of love. All right, but you look at this. Love, he said in the last verse of chapter 13, love never faileth. It never fails. He says in verse number 9 of your, uh, chapter 24, he said, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill some of you, and they shall be hated all. You shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offered, offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another, and many false prophets shall rise up, and shall deceive many. What are we seeing today? False teachers and preachers everywhere you look, and everywhere you turn, a new church is popping up. I've got the answer. I've got what we need. I've got what America needs. Just love one another. God's love. God's this. God's, uh, God will never send nobody to hell. At least they're right about that. You'll send your own self to hell by denying the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ye must be born again. All right? But he said, now in verse number 26, he said, Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, Go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers. Believe it not. Verse 27. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Look how fast he's going to come. That quick? He's going to be here and we're going to be gone. Faster than that. God is coming back. No thing can separate us from the love of God. In Romans in chapter 8, this is my life's reference. Chapter 8, verse number 35. And the Bible says this. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay. In all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor death nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Brother, all the devils in hell can't get me unsaved. So, I want to tell you tonight, I'm going to heaven. Are you? Let's stand. Heavenly Father, Almighty God tonight, Lord, help us to understand the Word of God. Help us, Lord, as these disciples came, Help us, Lord God, to be understanding in heart, in body, soul, mind, and spirit. Teach us, Lord, the ways of right and wrong. God, help us, Lord, to lean not upon our understanding, but on the wisdom and the right knowledge of God. Thank you, Lord, for every visitor, ever all the home folks. Bless those that are traveling. Watch over us all and keep us, Lord, and until the next appointed time. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.